Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today we're talking about racial equality. So today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and if you don't know who that guy is, you need to look him up and watch some videos. In fact, I recommend the I Have a Dream speech, which Dr. King had spoken on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial back in 1963. Um, he led a civil movement, and his push was for equality, equality based on race. And even today, so many years later, we still struggle with this. But not just in the world or just out in the open, but in church. How in the world do we have church so segregated? We have Latino church, we have white church, and we have black church. Why? Why Why is, that, why is there not any more mingling of these like races than what we have now? I don't know. It's a tough issue, but let's look at it. So if you haven't already, I recommend that you hop over on YouTube somewhere and watch the Dr. King speech from 1963. Um, I'll play a short little clip of it here, but I'll post a link uh, up in the top corner so you guys can check it out in its entirety. It's worth a watch, I promise you. So I'm a white male and I grew up in the South and honestly I haven't had a whole lot of experience with racism. I mean, I grew up in like the early 90s basically and playing football and stuff. I mean, I had black friends and and went to school with guys who were black. I was staying in groups with people who were black. I didn't have any, any issues whatsoever as far as a, a racism uh, from a perspective of like us versus them. I know that some schools are different and there are certainly like some, some groups even in my hometown that, that do have... Uh, blocks where they have, you know, this is, you know, one group of people and this is another group of people. But within my personal experience growing up, I did not experience that whatsoever. Um, so I didn't really understand the concept of racism. But when I was uh, about 16 years old, um, I was singing with a group and we went to Chattanooga and I was trying to get to this particular church. <clears throat> so I looked up the name, found the address, and this was before like GPS and stuff or before I had GPS. And so I had uh, typed, I printed out the directions and written them down and I was driving and I got here and uh, I went in and it was a predominantly black church and there was nobody else there that I knew. And I'm like, well, I must have came to the wrong place, but I'm here and there's no way that I'm going to make it to the place that I need to be. So I'm like, well, I'll just, you know, sit in the back and I'll, I'll listen to service. I mean, I was, I was dressed up. I had, you know, shirt and tie and dress shoes and, and nice pants on. I mean, I wasn't dressed slobbish or anything. I mean, I was, I was dressed for church and I was dressed to, to sing at church and uh, I didn't want to miss out on the service and I was already there. So I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll just, we'll just chill out here and, and attend here. But there was one of the deacons came to me and uh, he said, hey, he said, what are you doing here? I'm like, I told him my whole story and I said, hey, but, you know, I just I'll just stay here and, and you know, participate in church with you guys. And he said, he said, no, he said, that's not going to happen. He said, you don't belong here. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? I don't belong here. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. Like, we're brothers. Right. And he said, hey, you, you need to leave. You need to get out of here. Um, like, you can't stay. And I was I was crushed because I'd never I mean, I'm, I'm a white dude, grew up in the south. I, I had never experienced racism on the receiving end of it, and I, I don't know that it was racist in and of itself. They could have had some, like business meeting or something that they were doing that was sensitive, or uh, they might have thought that maybe I was going to be a threat, or I would I was there to cause trouble, and it, race could have had nothing to do with it. But it felt like racism to me, and like with a lot of things in life, it's not necessarily your intent, but the perception. And so you have to be careful about how you say and do things because of perception. But I mean, this this really hurt. I mean, because I'm like, I, I thought that I was going to be able to go in and, and worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I got kicked out of church. And from what I perceive, because of the color of my skin. And I didn't have a racist bone in my body and I didn't understand. Uh, I was confused and, and it hurt me. Um, but so that was my experience of it. And so you can get bitter or better. And uh, I was determined that I wasn't going to have uh, or show any of that of that racism uh, in my life, and I certainly wouldn't teach it to my kids. Um, and so that, that was a sticking point for me um, of, of racism and, and really my first experience that I'd, I'd had with it um, as a kid growing up. So what is race? Well, basically, you have uh, different categories that people place other people in. And I am a firm believer that there is one race, and that's the human race. 
I believe uh, the Bible word for word in this literal sense, I believe that there was uh, started off with two people, Adam and Eve, and I think that every person living and breathing on earth came from those two people. So I think we're all ultimately related. Further than that, I believe in the flood, and I think that there was Noah, his wife, his sons, and his sons' wives, and that was another like reset where we're all connected um, through a like a bloodline. And I, I do believe that there's been variations in the human form, and I know that we have light skin and dark skin, and that as people you know have kids and have families, that there's there's certainly some traits that that follow different family lines. Uh, but the sense of there being different quote unquote races of like this is like one breed of person, this is another breed of person. It's, it's ludicrous. That's not the way it works. I mean, we are people. People are people. And we need to love people, especially as Christians. So, which brings me to my second point is that in the church, there is only, there's Jews and there's Gentiles, right? So that's in part of Dr. King's speech, he mentions, he mentions the, the Jew and the Greek. And so the Jewish people were God's chosen people. And we as Gentiles, as we believe and put our trust and faith into Jesus Christ, that we are grafted in to the Jewish family. And so we don't have a leg to stand on as Christians to be racist in any sense of the imagination because especially between like black and white because we're both Gentiles I mean or I am anyways in my, in my situation because I'm a Gentile and and if my other brother's Gentiles we're grafted into the same family I mean that's like two people that are being adopted into a different family and then fighting with each other because they weren't the same that doesn't make sense to me I don't understand it but here's the important thing it doesn't matter what I think what does the Bible say so, as you think about Bible verses about people, you know that in the beginning, God created. So, God created man, right? He created man in his own image. We know that God created Adam and Eve, and that Eve is the mother of all living. And we know that God sent his son to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Said that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a global all people religion this is open to everybody this is not a white religion it is not a black religion it's not a latino religion it is for all because we are people and we are all created in god's image so all men are created equal period all men are created equal we have strengths and weaknesses everyone individually as groups maybe culturally we have weaknesses and benefits but in the eyes of god we are equal and we're equally sinful because we are man and we were born with the sin nature and we are in need of a savior. So we are equally in a pit. We're equally in a mess. And we equally need, need God. So one of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Colossians 3. And in that it talks about that if you're risen with Christ, then we are to seek those things which are above. And we're to set our affection on the things in, above that are in heaven and not on things of earth. Why? Because we're dead and our life should be hidden in Christ. Now, I list out a whole bunch of things here um, that we're supposed to die to and so to get rid of, like fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate infection. And then it says, for which things where the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. And so this is saying that, well, you once also walked in these things. And so now we're to put off those things like anger and wrath and malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And we're not supposed to lie to each other and seeing that we've put off the old man with our old deeds. And we put on the new man. And so in this new man, it's where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so it's saying that there is no distinct distinguishing between whether you're slave or free, whether you're barbarian or Scythian, or whether you're Jew or Greek, is that you are judged by your character and not the way that you were born. And that's exactly what Dr. King was, was asking for in his speech, is that we would be judged by the character of our hearts and not by the color of our skin. And so if we are have to get rid of all this old stuff, and it doesn't matter if we're bond or free or Greek or Jew, then what then does it matter? Well, it says, put on the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, uh, meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another, which is forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, so also you do. 
And this is our memory verse for this week is Colossians 3.14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And then verse 15 is, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. So we are to put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So I don't know what you think of when you hear the word charity. But I think of like a Salvation Army or Goodwill or um, some of these trips where you help people. And this is where people are dying to themselves. They give up part of their lives to give up their own money and their own time and their own talent and treasure in order to help others. And so this is a time in charity when you give to others and you don't expect anything back. And that's really important because there's all the time when we give and we expect something in return. We have these transactional relationships, we have transactional friendships, we have transactional uh, things at work. So I, I give my time and my talent to my work and then they give me treasure in return. So that's a money, that's a, a, what I reap as a reward of my efforts. Um, but in charity, it doesn't work that way. It's I give 100% and I expect nothing in return. And so if we have our minds armed with this of above all things, like at the tippy top, if we are, if we're putting on charity in our, in our thinking, and that's the bond of perfectness, that if, if we will have in our minds that we are giving 100% and selflessly serving others, and that we're not expecting anything in return, then that's going to solve a lot of our problems. A lot of our social problems, a lot of our people-to-people -people problems. I mean, this is this is a huge thing. But we're selfish, greedy people, and it causes us to rub and grind, and like we fight for us versus them. And you're higher than me, and I'm higher than you in this this rat race of life. No, that's that's not how it works. It's not how it's supposed to work. This, we we're supposed to be servants and humble, and to serve. And so. If we do that, we can let the peace of God rule in our hearts. And so if you can serve and give 100%, 100% and expect zero in turn um, and be called in one body, I think that the world would be a better place. So do that this week in honor of Dr. King um, because God wants you to do it. Don't look at skin color. Don't look at race. Don't look at whether you're Jew or Greek. Serve God and serve man. Thank you for joining me.